Hi, I'm MC Jesse. 大家好，读你听二点零。今日继续读 Miguel de Cervantes 嘅《Don Quixote》，同吉莫达啊，读到第六节啦。呢一节咧叫做 Of the diverting and important scrutiny which the curate and the barber made in the library of our ingenious gentleman。上一回咧就讲到 Don Quixote 咧有意无意啦。翻咗去佢屋企附近、哦，遇到佢嘅邻居，都因为佢嘅伤患啦、佢疲劳啦，咁就需要翻屋企休养啊。咁喺呢个时候咧，佢屋企人咧亦都向住呢个可以话系发牌人啦，又或者可以话系地方官员啦，向佢求救啊！吓，希望咧呢、这个当桥提咧可以唔好再俾呢个骑士精神所迷惑啦。咁而咁样做一个最重要嘅方法就系烧书咯。咁呢一节咧就睇下会唔会出现呢个因为烧书而产生嘅冲突啦。吓，当桥一提可唔可以掌握住佢嘅骑士精神先？跟住我嚟交俾 Costa 同大家读嚟听。He was still sleeping, so the curate asked the niece of the keys of the room where the books, the authors of all the mischief were, and right willingly she gave them. They all went in, the housekeeper with them, and found more than a hundred volumes of big books, very well bound, and some other small ones. The moment the housekeeper saw them, she turned about and ran out of the room, and came back immediately with a saucer of holy water and sprinkler, saying, "Here, your worship, Signor Licentiate, sprinkle this room. Don't leave any magician of the many there are in these books to bewitch us in revenge for our design of banishing them from the world." The simplicity of the housekeeper made the licentiate laugh, and he directed the barber to give him the books one by one to see what they were about, as they might, as there might be some to be found among them that did not deserve the penalty of fire. No, said the niece, there is no reason for showing mercy to any of them. They have every one of them done mischief. Better fling them out the window into the court and make a pile of them and set fire to them, or else. Carry them into the yard, and there a bonfire can be made without the smoke giving any annoyance. The housekeeper said the same. So eager were they both for the slaughter of those innocents, but the curate would not agree to it without first reading, at any rate, the titles. The first that Master Nicholas put into his hand was the four books of Amadis of Gaul. This seems a mysterious thing," said the curate. "For, as I have heard say, this was the first book of chivalry printed in Spain, and from this all the others derive their birth and origin. So it seems to me that we ought inexorably to condemn it to the flames as the founder of so vile a sect." "Nay, sir," said the barber. "I too have heard say that this is the best of all the books of its kind that have been written, and so, as something singular in its line, it ought to be pardoned." True," said the curate, "and for that reason, let its life be spared for the present. Let us see that other which is next to it. It is," said the barber, "the Sergius de Explandian, the lawful son of Amadis of Gaul." Then, verily," said the curate, "the merit of the father must not be put down to the account of the son. Take it, mistress housekeeper. Open the window and fling it into the yard, and lay the foundation of the pile for the bonfire we are to make." The housekeeper obeyed with great satisfaction, and the worthy Explandian went flying into the yard to await with all patience the fire that was in store for him. Proceed," said the curate. "This that comes next," said the barber, "is Amadis of Greece, and indeed I believe all those on this side are of the same Amadis lineage. Then to the yard with the whole of them," said the curate, "for to have the burning of Queen Pintiquiniestra and the shepherd Darino and his eclogues." And the bedevilled and involved discourses of his author, I would burn with them the father who begot me, if he were going about in the guise of the knight errant. I am of the same mind," said the barber. "And so am I," added the niece. "In that case," said the housekeeper. "Here, into the yard with them." They were handed to her, and as there were many of them, she spared herself the staircase and flung them down out of the window. "Who is that tub there?" said the curate. "This," said the barber. Is Don Olivente de Lor, the author of that book, said the curate, was the same that wrote the Garden of Flowers, 
And truly, there is no deciding which of the two books is the more truthful, or, to put it better, the less lying. All I can say is, send this one into the yard for a swaggering fool. This that follows is Flores Mate of Hercania, said the barber. Signor Flores Mate here, said the curate. Then by my faith, he must take up his quarters in the yard, in spite of his marvellous birth and visionary adventures, for the stiffness and dryness of his style deserve nothing else. Into the yard with him and the other, mistress housekeeper. With all my heart, signor, said she, and executed the order with great delight. This, said the barber, is the knight's platy. An old book, that, said the curate, but I find no reason for clemency in it. Send it after the others without appeal, which was done. Another book was opened, and they saw it was entitled The Knight of the Cross. For the sake of the holy name this book has, said the curate, its ignorance might be excused. But then, they say, behind the cross there's the devil, to the fire with it. Taking down another book, the barber said, this is the mirror of chivalry. I know his worship, said the curate, that is where Signor Ronaldo of Montalvan figures, with his friends and comrades, greater thieves than Cacus, and the twelve peers of France, with the voracious historian Turpin. However, I am not for condemning them to more than perpetual banishment, because, at any rate, they have some share in the invention of the famous Matteo Barado, whence too the Christian poet Ludovico Ariosto wove his web, to whom, if I find him here, and speaking any language but his own, I shall show no respect whatever. But if he speaks his own tongue, I will put him upon my head. Well, I have him in Italian, said the barber, but I do not understand him. Nor would it be well that you should understand him, said the curate. And on that score, we might have excused the captain if he had not brought him into Spain and turned him into Castilian. He robbed him of a great deal of his natural force, and so do all those who try to turn books written in verse into another language, for, with all the pains they take and all the cleverness they show, they never can reach the level of the originals as they were first produced. In short, I say that this book, and all that may be found treating of those French affairs, should be thrown into or deposited in some dry well, until after more consideration it is settled what is to be done with them excepting always one Bernardo de Capio, that is, going about, and another called Ronsevayas, for these, if they come into my hands, shall pass at once into those of the housekeeper and from hers into the fire without any reprieve. To all this the barber gave his assent, and looked upon it as right and proper, it being persuaded that the curate was so staunch to the faith and loyal to the truth that he would not for the world say anything opposed to them. Opening another book, he saw it was Palmerin de Oliver, and beside it was another called Palmerin of England, seeing which the licentiate said, Let the olive be made firewood of at once, and burn until no ashes even are left, and let that palm of England be kept and preserved as a thing that stands alone, and let such another case be made for it as that which Alexander found among the spoils of Darius, and set aside for the safekeeping of the works of the poet Homer. This book, Gossip, is of authority for two reasons. First, because it is very good, and secondly, because it is said to have been written by a wise and witty king of Portugal. All the adventures at the castle of Miraguada are excellent and of admirable contrivance, and the language is polished and clear, studying and observing the style befitting the speaker with propriety and judgment. So then, provided it seems good to you, Master Nicholas, I say let this and amethyst of gold be remitted the penalty of fire, and as for all the rest, let them perish without further question or query. Nay, gossip, said the barber, for this that I have here is the famous Don Bellianus. Well, said the curate, that and the second, third, and fourth parts all stand in need of a little rhubarb to purge the excess of bile and they must be cleared of all that stuff about the castle of fame and other greater affectations, to which end let them be allowed the overseas term, and according as they meant, so shall mercy or justice be meted out to them, and in the meantime, gossip, do you keep them in your house and let no one read them? With all my heart, said the barber, and not caring to tie himself in reading more books of chivalry, he told the housekeeper to take all the big ones and throw them into the yard. He was not said to one dull or death, 
but to one who enjoyed burning them more than weaving the broadcast and finest web that could be, and seizing about eight at a time, she flung them out of the window. In carrying so many together, she let one fall at the feet of the barber, who took it up, curious to know whose it was, and found it said, History of the famous knight, Tirante el Blanco. God bless me, said the curate with a shout. Tirante el Blanco here, hand it over gossip. For in it, I reckon I have found a treasury of enjoyment and a mine of recreation. Here is Don Kyrie Lazen of Montafan, a valiant knight, and his brother Thomas of Montafan, and the knight from Seca. With the battle, the bold Tyrant fought with the Mastiff, and the witticisms of the damsel Placidamifida, and the loves and wiles of the widow Reposada, and the empress in love with the squire Hippolito. In truth, gossip, by right of its style, it is the best book in the world. Here knights eat and sleep and die in their beds, and make their wills before dying, and a great deal more of which there is nothing in all the other books. Nevertheless, I say he who wrote it, for deliberately composing such fooleries, deserves to be sent to the galleys of fire. Take it home with you and read it, and you will see that what I have said is true. As you will, said the barber. But what are we to do with these little books that are left? These must be not chivalry, but poetry, said the curate. And opening one, he saw it was the diner of George de Montmer, and supposing all the others to be of the same sort. These, he said, do not deserve to be burned like the others, for they neither do nor can do the mischief the books of chivalry have done, being books of entertainment that can hurt no one. Ah, signor. Said the niece, "Your worship had better order these to be burned as well as the others, for it would be no wonder if, after being cured of his shivery disorder, my uncle, by reading these, took a fancy to turn shepherd and range the woods and fields singing and piping, or what would be still worse, to turn poet, which they say is an incurable and infectious malady." The damsel is right," said the curate. And it will be well to put this stumbling block and temptation out of our friend's way. To begin, then, with the diner of Montmartre, I am of opinion it should not be burned, but that it should be cleared of all that about the sage Felicia and the magic water, and of almost all the longer pieces of verse. Let it keep and welcome its prose and the honour of being the first of books of the kind. This that comes next, said the barber, is the diner. Entitled the second part by the Salamancan, and this other has the same title, and his author is Scipolo. As for that of the Salamancan, replied the curate, let it go to swell the number of the condemned in the yard, and let the Gilpolos be preserved as if it came from Apollo himself. But get on, gossip, and make haste, for it is growing late. This book, said the barber, opening another. Is the ten books of the fortune of love written by Antonio de Lovaso, a Sardinian poet? By the orders I have received, said the curate, since Apollo has been Apollo, and the muses have been muses, the poets have been poets. So droll and absurd a book as this has never been written, and in its way it is the best and the most singular of all of the species that have as yet appeared. And he who has not read it may be sure he has never read what is delightful. You give it here, gossip, for I make more account of having found it than if they had given me a cassock of Florence stuff. He put it aside with extreme satisfaction, and the barber went on. These that come next are the shepherd of Iberia, nymphs of Hannares, and enlightenment of jealousy. Then all we have to do, said the curate, is to hand them over to the secular arm of the housekeeper and ask me not why, or we shall never have done. This next is the pastor de Felida, no pastor that, said the curate, but a highly polished courtier. Let it be preserved as a precious jewel. This large one here, said the barber, is called the treasury of various poems. If there were not so many of them, said the curate, that they would be more relished. This book must be weeded and cleansed of certain vulgarities which it has with its excellences. Let it be preserved because the author is a friend of mine, and not of respect for other more heroic and loftier works that he has written. This continued the barber is the Concionero of Lopez de Maldonado.
The author of that book too, said the curate, is a great friend of mine, and his verses from his own mouth are the admiration of all who hear them. For such is the sweetness of his voice that he enchants when he chants them. It gives rather too much of his eclogues, but what is good was never yet plentiful. Let it be kept with those that have been set apart. But what book is that next it? The Galantia of Miguel de Cervantes said to Barbara. That Cervantes has been for many years a great friend of mine, and to my knowledge, he has had more experience in reverses than in verses. His book has some good invention in it. It presents us with something, but brings nothing to a conclusion. We must wait for the second part it promises. Perhaps with amendment, it may succeed in winning the full measure of grace that is now denied it. And in the meantime, do you, Signor Gossip, keep it shut up in your own quarters? Very good," said the barber. And here come three together: the Arocana of Don Alonso de Ercilla, the Austriada of Juan Ruvo, Justice of Cordova, and the Montserrat of Cristobal de Ferus, the Valencian poet. These three books," said the curate, "are the best that have been written in Castilian in heroic verse, and they may compare with the most famous of Italy. Let them be preserved as the richest treasures of poetry that Spain possesses." The curate was tired and would not look into any more books, and so he decided that contents uncertified, all the rest should be burned. But just then, the barber held open one called "The Tears of Angrica." I should have shed tears myself," said the curate when he heard the title. "Had I ordered that book to be burned, for its author was one of the famous poets of the world, not to say of Spain, and was very happy in the translation of some of Ovid's fables." 唔该晒 Costa， 好呢一节就系咁先，咁我就觉得系。呢一节嘅内容系非常之超越咗佢个年代啦，完全打破咗第四道墙啦。佢将佢嗰个年代咧前期少少或者同期嘅作品嘅作家啊，逐一去点评啦。但系佢代入咗喺一个诶、呃、有宗教信仰嘅人嘅身份啦，去点评啦。然之后诶，佢哋嘅立场，纵使系偏颇啦，佢哋。唔滿意嘅就會將佢抌咗去燒咗佢，啊同時更加會批評嗰個作者啦，包括佢自己在內啦。咁我覺得呢個係簡直係一場點講，好似一個 parody 咁啊！即係今時今日會喺社交媒體睇到嘅搞笑短片咁，非常之超越佢嗰個年代嘅一種寫作手法係。系可以话系极度跳脱啦，同埋打呢个措手不及。你冇谂过佢会做一节咁样嘅嘢，而且系个内容系非常之长啦，亦都要即场要需要现场嘅人去，即系可能要稍微阅读下呢本书嘅，如果唔系都讲唔出佢哋嘅对白。而个内容又会将佢阅读嗰个过程跳咗去啦，嗰、那个对白系好紧接咁样嘅一个对话，唔知道以为佢哋已经睇过晒啲书咁。咁係誒非常之好笑嘅一節咧，暫時講最好笑嘅一節係，我真係非常之意外啊！呢、這個作者可以寫到去咁樣嘅高度，有一個咁開懷、一個咁寬大嘅懷抱啦，都對當年嗰個社會風氣一個好大信心啊！即係唔會俾人覺得佢誒好過分啊，好 inappropriate 啦、啊，開一個咁大嘅玩笑啦、啊。我唔知道当年佢会唔会受到咩抨击啦，系嘛？烈嘅抨击啊！就呢啲作者啲名作，你都咁讲，我唔知道啦。我只系知道文中提及嘅书嘅作者咧，都系真有其事。好，我哋睇下啲咩字同大家分享。Curate 呢个就系一个名词嚟嘅，意思即系一个助理牧师啊。咁喺现场即系指导呢一班农民烧书嘅就系一个 curate 啦，一个助理级嘅。未升到上去 vicar 或者一个 parish 个 priest， 只系一个助理级嘅啫，唔系好高级嘅。Inexorably, inexorably, I N D X O R B L Y 系一个副词啦，啊，辅助个动词嘅意思即系 impossible to stop or prevent。文中我提到啦，呢啲书咧，即系因为有咁样嘅背景咧，就不能够抗拒地啊，要烧佢。Must be put into flames inexorably. 仲有啲舊啲嘅字啊，啲 archaic 啲嘅字啊，我唔分享，因為大家可能比較難用。最尾一個啦 ，witticism，witticism， 
，群发系 w i t t i c i s m。wit 嗰啲嘅字嘅头 ，wit w i t， 即系好醒目啦，部机智啊，聪明。witticism 系咩意思咧？个名词啊，意思即系 a witty remark， 咁啊即系个妙语啦。快捷好敏捷喺个说话上嘅一个表现，好妙语连珠咁样，有咁样嘅意味。好，今日讲呢度，下次仲大家分享读你听，拜拜。If you like this video, make sure to comment, like, share and subscribe. Adios.